Well, Simon, we have been getting a lot of questions, so everybody keep them coming. Remember to visit realestatetalkshow.ca or call our help desk anytime, 416-366-9090. And there is no such thing as a bad question. You know what? Whatever you're uncertain of, we are here to find the answer. Because, Simon, we don't know all the answers all the time, do we? Yeah, we do. <laughs> and it's free advice, so why wouldn't you? Yeah, well, no, sure. we don't always answer. We, we personally don't always have the answers, but when you combine we with all of the experts we bring in, yeah. we collectively have all the answers. For sure. So that's, you know, just to clarify. Of course, we have Emmanuel Beliveau, and he is principal at Flora Homes, but more importantly, I'm sure you're going to remember him. Five years on HGTV Network, My Parents' House, which I loved. Also, Discovery Channel's World's Greenest Home. Oh, I was so envious of you, Emmanuel. Uh, yeah, what a Traveling gig. Traveling the world, and in that show, Simon was really ahead of its time. I mean, I remember just going, are you kidding me? Like, Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah, it had to be had to be fun for sure. It, it was a great time. Thank you for having me. It's such Yay. a pleasure to be Glad here. To be. Yeah, love the show, by the way. Love, love, love the show. Yeah, and you're uh, part of our family. Yeah, yeah, right. Let's get that started. <laughs> hey, how about that? It's so good. Um, back to Greenest Homes, though. What a great show that was. Uh, traveling the world, seeing seeing green architecture and design. What a fantastic thing to do. Combining two of my favorite things, which is travel yeah. and design. So it was fun. Well, and you did a great job. Unbelievable. But we get a lot of questions. Last time you were on, we like the phones were going crazy. Mm-hmm. The emails were coming in. So I hope you don't mind. We're going to try and get through. We try and do our best here, but but everybody know we will get to them. So are you ready? Because yeah, they're all shoot. Let's, see, let's, see what we can, <laughs> let's see what we can do. And if we can knock something out, let's do that. Okay, very good. All right. Well, let's start with the green aspect. Mm-hmm. Basically, the question's asking, what are things that any one of us can do when we're thinking of renovating or buying things for our home that allows us to be green conscious? So we're kind of doing our part, but it doesn't blow the budget. What do you recommend? All right. So right off the top, the first thing you always remember is that when it comes to construction, you must destroy first. Okay. So let's put that out there right away. So we know that to make something, we must destroy something, make something new. So with that in mind, let's think about things that we can get that don't do that as much. Um, appliances for your home, energy efficiency, that's an important thing. So reduce your electricity costs, reduce what's coming into your home okay. without having to spend so much. Uh, low, VOC, low VOC paints, no VOC paints. Those are really obvious things that happen. Those so protect explain your kids. that. Explain so that. VOC is a volatile organic compound. And what that is, it's an off-gassing that comes from chemicals that are put in the materials that go into our home. It's it's in plastic, it's in paint, it's in, it's in all kinds of different things. Now, it's Emmanuel, how you finish flooring. Is it as bad as like once upon a time we were using oil paint on everything? That's right. So oil paint off-gasses, that's what's called oh, a okay. VOC. It's an organic it's an off-gassing okay. from the oil paint. And so people now are moving... Obviously, they're, they're creating they're creating legislation and stuff to deal with oil paints and not have that stuff going to homes anymore. So now it's going to um, low VOC paints and non-VOC paints that are going into homes for sure. Okay. All right. So painting, of course, because that's just the everyday thing that we can do to freshen up our homes mm-hmm. and it's easy to do. So be conscientious of that. Uh, again, the whole appliances thing. I mean, now they've really come up with amazing choices. I mean, Simon, even you come back and go, you're not going to believe the wash and dryer set I just said. The thing, basically, you can program it by your phone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, everything is going. Everything is going wireless and Bluetooth, and and you know, it just makes things easier. Because if I don't know about you, but if I can program it and not not have to worry about it, then it just gets done. Now you touched upon something, Emmanuel, that was important because a lot of times, Simon, we talk about the waste when people are doing renovations. I mean, they have all this stuff and it goes in the dumpster and it drives me crazy. Why aren't we recycling that? More importantly, of course, we have Habitat Humanities part of our family and mm-hmm. the uh, restores. We remind everybody, please call them. They'll come and pick it up. I mean, they're always looking for stuff to sell. At yeah. The I've done projects with Restore quite a few times doing the different... um the what they call upcycling projects for them and that store is a great place to find fantastic finds you can find great doors you can find windows you can find kitchen cabinet all kinds of things like let's say you wanted to redo your let's say you want to create storage in your garage well go to the restore get an old kitchen cabinetry mm. set up and just use that for the storage in your garage there's all kinds of things in there you can you can reuse and more importantly when you're taking your thing apart because you know to you, you might have moved into a place Simon you said that you sold a place to somebody mm-hmm. and the place was beautiful you loved the kitchen but they decided it wasn't their taste it was a, it was a brand new kitchen didn't it? It wasn't an upscale kitchen, but it was brand new. And so uh, Restore came in and they actually took it off the wall. They they took it out and they and they recycled it. It, it, mm-hmm. it actually saved the homeowner money and it did some good as well. So yeah, Fantastic. Now, another question is regarding carpets. Mm-hmm. So the concern is, is that they understand that there's a lot of processing involved. There's different kinds of carpets, the natural, as well as some of the different variable fibers. So they're asking, well, you know what, what are my options? Because they still want to have carpet in those bedrooms. Yeah, there are a couple different options out there. Obviously, going organic, so go. you can get um, wool carpets. Um, you can get silk. Um, there's other products out there on the market now. There's one particular product. I can't remember the name, so I'm not going to say the name, but I will tell you what it does. Um, it actually helps clean the air. Wow. 
So it actually absorbs the the whatever might be in the air and actually cleans the air. So it's one of those things that's an active carpet that actually actually cleans your home as you as you have in your home. So you know thing. what we should do because Simon, this is something that we get a lot of questions about, and even ourselves, we're not we're uncertain. You are that green expert. So I think what we do is certainly have you come back, and maybe we'll do a segment on that so we can sure. talk specifically and understand. Uh, because I'm kind of, I'm putting you on the spot. That's here. okay. <laughs> that's okay. The, the brand the brand eludes me right now, and, yeah. but uh, I can definitely find that. Sounds like right something away. from Star Trek. Yeah. Right? It's, it's alive and it actually. It's it walks chicken crumbs, yeah, and, you know. My it's thing it's, is, what if it eats us? Like, yeah. what if you walk oh. and it says, we don't like you, and it just starts absorbing <laughs> you in the car, but that wouldn't be very good. <laughs> would not be good. But it's a valid question because we're all concerned about our health. We're concerned about what we're breathing, and our homes are getting so bloody airtight. So really, that stuff is staying in our, our walls, right? Mm-hmm. I do want to say one thing about construction. You mentioned what other things you can do when it comes to renovating. Um, you know, when it comes to if you're at the if you're at the beginning stage of a project, in other words, if you're in the design stage of a project, think about passive solar design. So those are ways to keep the energy efficiency in your home. So think about your, your window locations, your eaves. Wow. Those sorts of things are very important when it comes to designing your so home. So give us some tips on that. Okay, so basically, you know, you have to look at where the sun the sun sets, the sun rises. Look at those sorts of things. You want to make sure you have overhang so that in the middle of summertime, when it's high noon, the sun isn't shining, shining directly into your home. So you want to have an eyebrow above the window for places like that. But in but what happens is in the wintertime, the sun is further down the horizon. The sun can actually come into the home, which, which heats the home in the wintertime. Wow. So the passive solar is a great way to, to, to really deal um, with energy efficiencies, but also from a cost perspective, you're now designing a home around the sun. So what that means is that you're using the sun's energy to help heat and cool your home. And there are a lot of window companies now that are also taking that heat. Um, so there's new innovation, Simon, mm-hmm. in, in regards to that whole how we dress our home up with the windows yeah. that take advantage of trying to maintain the heat as well because we are a four season we're, you know country we're very fortunate but they are drastically different yeah. compared oh, yeah. to the winter of course in the summer yeah. and there's a lot to consider as well in that regard now this is a question that's a little different we're going to get off the whole uh, green sure. uh, effect here um, when you were on last we were talking a little bit about just dressing up homes and things and tips and ideas there's a specific question regarding trim mm. and, and molding and actually Simon this is somebody that um, uh, kind of addressed it to you as well they were asking is the whole like doing molding and 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 can you go too far? And more importantly, do you get a good return on investment? So she was asking so we're you, about Simon. Crown moldings yeah, and that so kind she, of a she's thing. asking yeah. from a realtor perspective for you, and then Emmanuel asking you from a designer perspective. Mm-hmm. It, is it really something that you should still be doing? And uh, is there a limit as to how much? So I'll start with you, Emmanuel. Okay, so from a design perspective, it all comes down to what your design uh, aesthetic is. If your stuff is very traditional, then yeah, of course, uh, you know, molding and trim is very important. How you do that, you can layer it up depending on how thick and you know how how much you want to romanticize that idea. You can't overdo it, of course. Depends on the type of home you're in. If you're in a modern home, then obviously there's very little trim. It's mostly about reveals. It's mostly about um, shadow lines and fun stuff like that, where you're not going to have it's all raw. kinds. Of, yeah, it's, yeah, it's very yeah. raw. It's very yeah. raw space. I'm actually doing a house right now, uh, Mississauga, where, where the trim's actually going in right now. Um, and I have another client who just negotiated to put trim in his house and he's got a more contemporary p- place. Um, and what's funny is, is that, you know, I have this one client who, who went ahead with the lowest bidder on the, on the, on the installer. And I have this other client who we've gone with as a great installer to put the stuff in and the cl- the stuff is going in beautifully. And I know when it's done, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. Mm. It's going to get sprayed. It's going to be a gorgeous home. The other situation I know what's going to happen is, is that you've spent all this money on a renovation of your home. All the walls are true and square. All the doors are in perfect and everything else. And then you have someone come in the lowest bidder to put in trim and detail. And it's and not my square. fear is that the finishing aspect yeah. of the home isn't going to be just right. So you're going to walk the space and you're going to go, oh, well, why is there a gap in my baseboard here? Why is there a gap in my door trim here? Why are the miters not square? Why is this not level? And all of a sudden that really affects the overall finish of the home. So finishing details are absolutely paramount in a home. You have to make sure your trim detail, your trim, your your details, your finishing carpenters, all those guys really get it square and get it right. And when you're doing this, sometimes it also, people do the paneling of the walls too. I mean, when you have an expert, it's an art form. Mm-hmm. And then they offer you solutions. Sometimes, you know, you have a wall and you just don't know what to do with it or paint. You know, they now can panel. They can do waffle walls. They can do the beadboard effect. Mm-hmm. They can do the wainscoting of varying heights. So they'll come in and give you great advice that will help to enhance the resale value. But more importantly, it's an art form, right? Yeah, absolutely. And of course, let your designer uh, make those, uh, those design choices. <laughs> for your home, of course. That's why we get paid the big dollars. Uh, we also have a project that we're just finishing as well. Uh, it's been flipped as a renovation project and same thing. Some of the trim work in that house, to me, when I look at it, I kind of go, uh, a couple of holes, a couple of spots there. And my concern is, and I'll address this to you, Simon, does the buyer come in and look at trim work details, finishing details, and does that finishing detail actually affect their impression of what they should offer when it comes to buying the house? You took the words out of my mouth. Yeah, because I mean, first of all, you're, you're right. It has to it has to be in keeping with the aesthetic or, or the objective of, of the design. But here's 
here's what happens. You could have a perfect house. You could have perfect walls and roof and floor and everything else. And if the trim looks like crap, then people are going to think the rest of the house. I mean, ah, that, I mean that's the front. There's more wrong that's, with it. That's the facade. Yeah, there's all these little things. And, you know, one squeaky floor, I remember, you know, ruined a buyer's perception of a house. One squeaky floor. And this is a brand new construction. So, and, and the other thing, I, 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 I kind of have to agree with you. Some people overdo it. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. just go crazy. I mean, they, they, got a, they, they must have got a, a truckload on sale. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, let's put it everywhere. I mean, I saw crown molding in the washroom that was just wrong. And it was, yeah. Yeah. So y- you, have to, you have to let someone who knows construction do the construction. Yeah. You have to let no- someone who knows design give you a direction there. Okay. And you let, you let everybody do their job. You have a little say in it, but let them do their job. Well, then you brought up a great point, Simon. So for somebody like yourself, Emmanuel, mm-hmm. you have a designer company. People mm-hmm. think, okay, well, this is beyond my realm. It's beyond my budget. Uh, it's just too expensive. It's not, that, it's not something that's not an option for me. Can you please clarify that? When you say budget, what do you mean? Budget well, towards... Well, people think that you're unattainable. Like that, you oh, know, sorry, it, you know having, hiring service. a designer, a design service, they just think that it's just something that's too out of reach. It's not the, something that all of us can do and benefit from. Because it's 100000 bucks to hire you, right? <laughs> that's No, it's 110. 110. 110. 110. Yeah. It went up. In euros. <laughs> Since you started coming on the show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that happens. No, you know, you know, here's what I tell people. It's really simple. Um, you, hire, you hire someone who gives you professional advice, and that creates efficiency in your time. What it also does, it gives you access to materials and products and services that you wouldn't normally get on your own. So because of that, you're probably going to get rebates and, and discounts by using the services through us. Mm. And so those rebates and discounts, when those things add up, that usually covers our fees. Hello. And that's why you work it out. So if you're spending, let's say, $100,000 on, on an interior finish for a project, and we would generally we would generally bill around 10% of the interior of the, of the interior design projects, so you're looking at $10,000 for a mm-hmm. service. It's a general number. Um, if you're working with us on, on a project like that, you might put $100,000 you might put $100, of materials in your home, but there's a good chance that a lot of the materials you're bringing into your home, you're getting at a 20 to 30 to 40% discount on those materials. So that savings right there yeah, win, pays win. for our services. Mm-hmm. So why not hire a professional to get professional advice that can work with your trades, it can work with your finishers to make sure they're finishing the house exactly the way you want to have it done, mm-hmm. the, the overall vision exactly what you want, and you've got someone to oversee the whole project all the way through. Yeah, so win, win. That way. And, and access to trades that you've had a good experience with, that you know That's key. that you know can do a good job and who want to keep you happy because yeah. they want to be referred over and over again. Peace of mind. Yeah. That's worth a weight in gold. All oh, right. Well, we're going to remind yeah. our listeners, if they okay. want to reach out, of course, to you and ask more questions, they can visit realestatetalkshow.ca, call our help desk, 416-366-9090, but they can also reach you directly. So, Emmanuel, how can they uh, How can they find you? Well, you can find me at emmanuel at floro.ca. That's E-M-M-A-N-U-E-L at F-L-O-R-O.ca. Or you can check our website out at florohome.com. That's F-L-O-R-O-H-O-M-E.com. Excellent. Well, of course, we love having you here on the show, not just as our green expert and our design expert, but more importantly, you just bring so much fun here. So thank you for joining us again. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. We have to have you back.